Welcome to ESPN's College Football Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. From Sanford Stadium, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Between the venerable hedges, the storied hedges here in Athens, tonight it's Vanderbilt taking on number five, the Georgia Bulldogs. A pivotal game for both these crews for variant reasons. Anticipated, highly debated game for the last week. Actually, going back to last year, more on that in just a bit. Mark Jones, Brock Heward, Maria Daler down in the field joining us in just a few moments. Good news for number five, Georgia, is that their starting linebacker, one of the stars of this team, Jarvis Jones, is back in the lineup after being out last week against FAU. He's a guy that passed up tens of millions of dollars in the NFL to return to school. Why and what does he bring to the table? Well, he's Mel Kuyper and Tom McShay's number one guy on their big board right now. Why? Because he's relentless in his play. He's a tremendous talent. The biggest compliment you can pay a player is when you make everyone around you better, and he does that. They missed him a week ago. He is revved up and ready, and Vanderbilt better know where 26 is on the field. Jarvis Jones already putting up some pretty gaudy stats in just two games. Jones, one of the guys that allows Georgia to really hang their hat on defense as the Bulldogs come onto the field. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Folks, safe to say that we're all just trying to stay hydrated today. Man and beast alike. Ugga Nine made his debut last week for Georgia. Vanderbilt taking on number five, Georgia. And an interesting backdrop for this contest today. It goes back to a year ago in Nashville. In the dying moments of the game, the Commodore is blocking a Bulldog punt setting up a last gasp effort for the upset victory would have been its first in 17 tries but that pass to Boyd incomplete and Georgia escaped with the win but in the wake of the victory Todd Grantham the defensive coordinator James Franklin of Vanderbilt got into each other's grills some words were exchanged and Franklin says we're expecting a very warm welcome here in Athens of course tongue-in-cheek but this is a different type of Vanderbilt team with a little bit of an edge, isn't it? And it's a real credit to James Franklin. He knows when he took this job, when he came in here, they couldn't just be status quo. He had to push the envelope a little bit, and he's willing to do so. Now, can his team follow? Because I know this, that proud Georgia defense, they're going to have the backs of their defensive coordinator, and I expect this one to be chippy. Well, that offense for Vanderbilt put up a lot of points last week against Presbyterian College in a 58-0 win, but there's been a very spirited quarterbacking competition that dates back several months we still don't know who the starter is but Maria Taylor is going to tell us right now Maria yeah guys the quarterback question has finally been answered coach Franklin will be starting Jordan Rogers over Austin Carter Samuels he said it ultimately came down to who he thought would manage the game better and he's going to handle the quarterback position just like any other position in practice whoever has the best practice gets the starting nod this week it's Rogers but look out for today he's going to give him a pretty long leash because he does not want Rogers looking over his shoulder after every play a pretty intriguing storyline that will play out during the course of the next 60 minutes. Brock, how surprised are you that it's Rodgers over Carter Sanders? I am pretty surprised because I would have thought you wanted to give Rodgers the game a week ago against Presbyterian, a blowout 59 nothing win by Vanderbilt, a chance to feel good about himself. But as you saw that shot of Jordan Rodgers, he's amped up and ready to go tonight. Georgia winning the toss, deferring to the second half. Vanderbilt receiving Andre Howe. And he's brought down inside the 20-yard line at about the 15. Where it'll be first down and 10 for Jordan Rodgers, the 6'2", 212-pound redshirt senior quarterback, completing 54% of his passes on the season. Two touchdowns, just 
one interceptions you have to wonder about his mental state after watching all of last week from the sidelines he better be hungry for success I think pulled because Vanderbilt was 0 and 2 and as much as James Franklin wants to get over the hump the redshirt senior couldn't do that the first two outings he'll have an opportunity with a marquee national stage tonight Zach Stacy the tailback beside him Stacy took one to distance last week on the first play and we have a flag down on the far side of the field. Looks like that's going to be a procedure penalty. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 52. Five yards from the previous spot. First down. Andrew Bridges, the right tackle, moving a little bit early. An unfavorable beginning for the Commodores. Coach Franklin talked this week about wanting Rodgers to manage the game, his quarterback to manage the game. That tells me... The Rodgers is trying to do a little too much early. Let the game come to you. Take what is there. First and 15. Handed off to Zach Stacy between the tackles. He moves the pile out to about the 12 or 13 yard line. Picks up four. He's the leading returning rusher this year in the SEC. Pretty good talent. Had eight rushes last week for 174 yards in that victory. And he better get ready to get hit tonight. 5'9", 210. He's powerfully built. But this front seven of Georgia, and there's a good look at our impact player, Jarvis Jones. Six seniors within that front seven, and as big and physical as anybody in college football. Second and 11. Little option, high toss. But good hands by Zach Stacy on a powerful run out near the first down marker. Hey, tell us why Jarvis Jones is so unique. I said earlier he makes his teammates better. He will be lined up everywhere. Look at the impact against Missouri and watch the running back scan all the way across the line of scrimmage to help his buddy out that tackle. And when Missouri went one on one, it was a nightmare. Jarvis Jones was national player of the week because of the speed, that dip, and the burst to finish. Two sacks, two forced fumbles, an interception. Clearly why Mr. McShea and Mr. Kuyper have him number one on their big board. Well, coaches say he came back more of a complete player this year. Got stronger in the weight room and more flags down on the field. Illegal substitution on the offense. Broke the hole with 12 players. And Pilters five yards from the previous spot. Third down. And another penalty against Vanderbilt here in the early going. And uh, what does it do for the mentality of a team? Not just the defense, but when you see a guy that would have been a high first round pick come back and play again. You were in the room yesterday with him. What did you yeah. take away? That's, that's a mature yeah. young man. He's going to be 23 in October. Set out a year. Many times you hear players say, hey, I'm blessed. I'm so thankful. I'm fortunate what I have. And not that they're not genuine in their comments, but when the game was taken away from you or nearly taken away from you as it was for Jarvis at USC with the neck injury, you could tell he appreciates every day. And besides just coming back, the effort and intensity with which he plays, it embodies this defense. It elevates this defense. And when your best player plays that hard, you're a coach's dream. Third and six. Rodgers keeps it and is brought down at the 20-yard line. Short of the first down, picked up a pair. Herrera making the stop on the play, and the Commodores will punt. And that's unfortunate. A lot of run early, and you take away those two procedural penalties, the 10 yards and penalties, you would have moved the chains. You cannot afford three and outs tonight. And remember this stat. Vanderbilt, one of the worst in college football on third down, just 26% this season, and you can see uh, animated head coach knows they've got to move the chains and especially early. Richard Kent into punt, standing on his own six yard line. Dangerous punt returner back for the Bulldogs, Malcolm Mitchell, number 35, pardon me, at the 35 yard line. And another flag. False start. Offense, number one. But the Commodores. Is five yards. Still fourth down. Really disconcerted here on the first series. Is it the noise? Is it the moment? Is it going on the road in an environment like this? They haven't been this season. Probably all of the above. And afford those mistakes before the ball's even snapped. Kent on his one yard line now. A high spiral, great punt. 
Drives Mitchell all the way back to the 30. And he finds an alley. Mitchell across midfield into Vanderbilt territory at the 46. A 54 yard punt, but 24 on the return by one of the more dangerous players on the field. Usually a two way threat, but be playing only on defense today, or so we're told. Well, Aaron Murray's the starting quarterback for the Georgia Bulldogs, completing 64% of his passes, eight touchdown tosses on the season so far against just two interceptions. A former freshman All American, and he continues to get better. Now, a big time quarterback. Todd Gurley in the backfield dotting the eye. It's Gurley the freshman. Breaks a couple of tackles slips outside for a nice game. Let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We've already talked about a number of them probably no surprise but Michael Bennett the big play receiver six foot three target. They love him on double moves. Mitchell is a two way threat. And Jones obviously a difference maker defensively. Really picked up seven. That's below his average of almost 10 per touch. Keeps the legs going and down to the 35 yard line picks up a first down. A missed tackle on the play by Barnes. Strong run Brock. That's a true freshman. That's 220 pounds. Vanderbilt defensive coordinator Bob Shoup said we have got to tackle him ways down and you saw a couple Commodores not heed that advice you go high you're going to go into the ground you've got to wrap his legs. Murray with a play fake wide open that's complete to Tavares King and King brought down just inside the 20 out of the Bulldog first down King one of the leaders from that wide receiver position he picks up 16 and Georgia doing an excellent job with their tempo you would expect that from a quarterback that's played 30 games started 30 games here as you referenced earlier as a freshman as well in complete control at the line of scrimmage Bulldogs in a pretty good rhythm right now on their opening series Reach the bubble screen that's Brown and Brown makes it down to the 11 yard line Marlon Brown one of those three receivers Already with a hundred yard game this season. Got a good block on the outside from Chris Conley. Down to the 11 yard line. Second and two. Murray hands it off to Gurley. And a first down at about the six. First and goal coming up. Ladler making the stop for the Commodores. One of the advantages or what Missouri did well against these freshman running backs is they stopped them at the line of scrimmage. You've already seen in the first four or five carries tonight that downhill nature. That's what Georgia wants to establish. It will be imperative that Vanderbilt contains these young backs because if they bring that element along with the passing game, I don't know if they have a chance tonight. Murray, a predetermined run, it looked like Brock. Brought down at about the three. The second and goal. Murray, pretty good scrambler too. He can use use his legs a little bit. And he's a good athlete. He's not going to make a living running and juking people and running through them as we see in college football as Braxton Miller did once again for Ohio State. But he's capable. And just I love the conviction and the urgency and the tempo with which they're playing. Early again. Touchdown Georgia. May I remind you that's a true freshman. 6'1, 220 pounds. Look at the shoulder pads. Look at the lean. No doubt about that. That forward lean, they got it going on that drive. Vanderbilt must run blitz. They must tackle better at the second and third level. Early with poise that belies his age. His fifth rushing touchdown of the season. One half of that lightning and thunder combination. 7 nothing when we come back to Athens. ESPN College Football available anytime, anywhere on your computer, mobile device, whatever on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app, which is a great app I have on my iPhone, iPad, and laptop at home. And uh, so easy to use. I think even Uga 9. Yeah. 
can get in there and get it done. And wait till you see our welcome to our university this week <laughs> with Uganon. That's that's a great tease there. Uganon happy about that opening drive by Georgia, set up by that nice punt return by Malcolm Mitchell. Seven plays, 47 yards, only used up 211 on the clock to put it in the end zone. You get the sense this crowd knows and believes they're watching the fifth ranked team in America. A yard deep, Brian Kimbrough. And Kimbrough chopped down at the 17 yard line. And he gets up slowly. First down and 10, Jordan Rogers in on his second series. But Franklin said that Rogers was visibly upset when the two of them sat down last week in his office and talked about Austin Carter Samuels being the starter. But he said, hey, I would expect him to be upset because he's a competitor. And he handled it like a pro. And he went out this week in practice. Coach Franklin opened up the practice and won the job, won the start tonight. The three step drop. And the pass is ruled complete at the 26. Let's go back to Wendy Nix in the studio. All right, Wendy, back here, second down and one. Stacy has the first down and then some nice burst. And finally brought down at the 35 yard line and a first down for Vanderbilt. Good way to get back on their feet after self destructing in that opening drive with three penalties on their first possession, Brock. And Coach Franklin would love to establish that play more than any other. That is the power run. Every time you see the fullback and the guard pulling, if he can get that kind of production out of that play against this defensive group, it really sets up the rest of his play action pass. Three receiver formation. Rodgers keeps it. Down to about the 37 yard line picked up two on the play and I really believe that element is why he's starting tonight as good of a practice week as he had James Franklin knows that he just can't line up against Georgia down in and down out he's got to have a quarterback be resourceful and creative and you see a look at Austin Carter Samuels Rodgers is more of a creator than Samuels little counter Zach Stacy with the handoff Stacy over the 40 is forward progress going to be marked at about the 42 yard line. Picks up five, gives them a third and about three to go. A manageable situation. What do you like looking forward here on third and three? Well, I like what they're doing in the run game, and I like how they're accounting for Jarvis Jones right now. They also know he's an impact player, and it's getting scrappy and it's getting physical inside there. But getting four yards, five yards, six yards on these run plays, huge for Vanderbilt. Last year, Vandy got them on a few trick plays, direct snap. To the tailback Tate and Wesley Tate picks up the first down. Let's talk about that a little bit. Last year they threw a halfback option for a touchdown. Got some big plays in special teams. How much of that do they have to open up to win tonight? They do have to take some of those risks. However, this is very nice to see if you're Vanderbilt. And for Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator, who told us yesterday and Vanderbilt was a lot of gimmicks a season ago got a lot of their production not the case here they moved the ball here two first downs largely running it right at this front seven Wesley Tate now in a tailback Rogers goes up top contact the flag and it's intercepted picked off by Smith Brandon Smith who last year played on offense and defense well, let's see what this flag is about. There's a lot of contact down that far sideline. Jordan Matthews was the intended receiver. And here's the call. Pass interference. Defense. Number one. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Also an automatic first down. Georgia loves to play very physical, not just in their front seven, but outside. However, you can't do that. You just can't, and you can see the referee right away. He's watching it in that contact all the time. Any opportunity that a corner gets his hands into the chest and impedes that wide receiver from getting to the ball, it's going to draw that penalty. Gives him an automatic first down to the 39 of the Bulldogs. Jordan Matthews, their home run hitter from the wide receiver position. Little draw play. This is Tate. Nowhere to go, brought down from behind. Great pursuit by Chase Vassar. 
who missed the first two games of the season and a loss of four on the play. You know what you love to see there? Jarvis Jones is not just about 13 and a half sacks a season ago. Watch him right on the edge, take on that block three, four yards deep. Yeah, he doesn't make the tackle, but he stops it in the backfield. That's why the NFL guys love him. Not one dimensional. He'll play on the right, he'll play on the left, he'll play in the middle, and just as capable against the run and the downhill run as he is teeing off and getting after the passer. Second and 14. And another flag on the field. Ball start. Offense number 67. That's Five the fourth one Taylor. against Vanderbilt. Down. How much of that do you think is a function of the cadence? You know, you got a new quarterback in there. Any effect at all? A little bit. However, Rodgers played most of all last season. That's a very veteran tackle. Wesley Johnson with 29 consecutive starts. I think it's a byproduct of the 90-some thousand here and the noise that they're creating and the chaos that a Mr. Jones brings across the other side of the line of scrimmage. Second and 19. Little jump pass, incomplete, almost intercepted into and out of the arms of Herrera. Marlo Herrera, as the pass was intended for Wesley Tate. Vanderbilt got lucky there. And those are the plays that drive the head coach just a little bit batty from the redshirt senior. He's been very effective on this drive. No reason to jump pass there. Good protection in front of you. You need your fifth year senior to show poise in that pocket. Third and long. has been Rodgers' most reliable receiver. Rodgers takes off with it. And knocked out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. It'll be short of the first down. It's a type of game where you might want to take some risks. Do you go for it here? You're on the fringes, outside fringes of field goals. Did you watch what Georgia just did offensively against you? <laughs> I like the fact that you possessed the ball. You gave your defense a chance to catch their breath a little bit. Vanderbilt has played good defense the first three weeks of the season. I think you don't panic here, you punt it, and you make Georgia go the long field. Richard Kent into punt again. Malcolm Mitchell, who had that great punt return the last time, has his heels planted on the 10. Kent aims for the Coffin corner. And this one will go out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Not a bad job by him. They're going to spot it at the 12 yard line. Timeout on the field. Aaron Murray going to take the reins of the offense for the second time when we come back. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Miller Lite because when friends come together, it's not just a good time. It's Miller time. And in part by the all new Dodge Dart. Dodge New Rules. Back between the hedges here in Athens, Georgia. Sanford Stadium, the third, 73rd chapter of Georgia against Vanderbilt. And Georgia has won 22 of the last 24 against the Commodores here at home. Backs line up out of the eye. Early on the toss. And that Commodore defense holding them to just four yards. And Maria, tell us more about that defense of Andy. Yeah, defensive line coach Sean Spencer grabbed Rob Lore, his defensive tackle, and his defensive end, Walker May, after Georgia's scoring drive and said they need to wake up. It'll be a really long night if they don't stop the run. Sounds like he's trying to light a fire under his line, guys. All right, Maria, second down and six. More flags, which is seeming to be a, a recurring theme here early in the game. Hey, in wake of Maria's report. Offside, defense, number 90, five-yard penalty, second down. What's it going to look like if that front is successful against Georgia's front? The, f the first tackler has got to get the back down, and you just saw them try to run blitz, and that's why they were offsides. They're trying to get that extra half step to get downhill and stalemate one of these runs at the line of scrimmage. Get another chance here, Gurley. Stop near the line of scrimmage. That's a win for Vanderbilt, limiting him to just one. It'll be first down, though, as Gurley getting a lot of work early in the ball game here. They talk about his poise, always in the football offices, talking football, watching extra video. 
meeting with his coaches, part of a package deal with Keith Marshall, both of them from North Carolina. And look at that, another flag. What is that the seventh flag of the game? Substitution infraction. Offense. Five drive penalty. Still first down. I don't think Mark Rick was <laughs> too happy with that one. No, and in fact, during one of the last breaks, James Franklin was talking to this officiating crew for the very same call with a substitution error and a substitution flag. This crew is aggressive with their penalties. Keith Marshall now in the ball game. He's in a tailback. He's the other half of that thunder and lightning combination. They use him as a receiver. He's caught and brought down immediately at the 11 yard line. Nice play by Walker May, who might be their best pass rusher up front. A loss of five. Well, unlike that first series where Vanderbilt just played a lot of base defense and got gashed and run on, they're bringing it a little bit. That's a zone blitz where Walker May it falls out into the flat and does exactly what Maria was talking about, and their defensive line coach was urging, and that is get the player to the ground. Second and 20. There's Marshall again, has a little bit more room. Motors up to the 29-yard line. Short of the first down by about four yards. Marshall was the first of those recruits to commit ahead of Gurley. The two of them had always talked about going to school together. And after Marshall committed days later, Gurley did the same. And things have worked out pretty well for the Bulldogs in the wake of Isaiah Crowell's dismissal from the team. Third and four. Murray sacked back at the 25. And the Commodore defense stout on that series. Jared Morse with the sack. And much more aggressive up front in a right tackle for Georgia. Keep an eye on John Theus all night long. That is a matchup that Vanderbilt, ben, Vanderbilt feels like they can win. Archibald, Archibald Barnes, the outside linebacker, one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to try to create one-on-ones against that freshman right tackle and see if they can get some push like they did there. Barber into punt. Flag thrown. They ran into the punter as Matthews makes the catch of the 30. But there's a flag down all the way back at the 16 after that 44-yard punt. Let's see what that flag is all about. Matthews loses his helmet. Caleb Azabuki. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. The defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Might have been Azabuki there, number 55. Take one more look at what happened. You tell me if he's blocked into the punter here. And does he even hit the punter? He didn't hit the punter. I'm sorry. A, he went under his leg. A, he's blocked, and B, he's behind the punter. Hey, what? James Franklin's not going to be happy about that call when he sees the video. Can't Regardless. have that call. Yeah, you, you can't have. If you're Vanderbilt, you can't afford those kind of penalties. Now, as your true freshman, you got to try to avoid the launch point as best you can. And credit to the true freshman on the other side, the punter with a wonderful acting job. But that's a devastating 15 yards. Keith Marshall in the ball game takes the handoff. And Marshall out to the 48-yard line. How do you compare and contrast the two, Marshall and Gurley, in the backfield? Marshall is the slasher, the higher-rated prospect, the number two running back, in fact, in the ESPN News rankings a year ago. Both of them are track kids. That's where originally they became buddies. They're roommates now. But he's got a little bit more of the home run gear where Gurley's just a bit more physical. He gets another carry. Off the left side, a gaping hole. And Marshall is going. Touchdown. That's a dangerous combination. You're talking about Gurley as the workhorse, wear you down, and then you give Marshall just a crease. He'll go north and south and take it the distance. You think that penalty? Yards. You think that penalty was a big one on the punt? Huge. A career-long run. It is young, and they blow the snap. It goes through the hands of the holder. This can be two points. Picks it up. 
Uh, brought down to me. Oh, still not whistled at it. Now it finally is, or is it? There's a flag down. What else is new? <laughs> Back at the 37. We are seeing a lot of linen on the field in this game. The rule on the field is that the kicker threw an incomplete forward pass. Therefore, the play was dead at the incomplete spot. The extra point is no good. Well, it's 13 nothing after that 52 yard score by Keith Marshall. And it was set up by this penalty against Vanderbilt, a phantom penalty. And youth being served in that Georgia backfield in a big way. Back with more after this. Keith Marshall with his second touchdown of the season. What made this play go, Brock? Anytime you can get your running back one on one with a safety and watch your right guard get clean and through on the linebacker, that's fantastic work by Chris Burnett. And that allows Marshall just a one on one right there with the free safety, Marshall. He goes the distance and you love the young kid not wasting one bit of real estate. Can't do it any better north to south than that. I think that a couple of months ago when Isaiah Crowell was dismissed from the team freshman of the year in the SEC last year there were questions about what might happen at the tailback position. No such questions exist anymore. Deep and they're going to bring it out. This is Kimbrough. And a flag down at the 17 yard line. James Franklin said he does not want one of his punt returners to ever fair catch it. If they get six inches, he does not want a fair catch. I'm guessing he's telling his kickoff return guys to not concede. That culture, changing the identity, take it out. I don't care if you're five yards deep, we won't concede anything. During the return. Holding on the receiving team, number 16, half the distance to the goal, first down. Okay, Wendy, first down and 10 from the seven. Rogers on the toss to Stacy, breaks a tackle, and a strong, determined run by Zach Stacy. Picks up 13 for the first down. This is an enormous drive very early in the game to handle adversity. They should have been off the field, forcing a, 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 a fourth down, but the punt penalty. Continue the drive for Georgia. They march down, and that's unfortunate. That's Sean Williams. He's their most the senior local safety player and leader on the field. And Bakari Rambo, the senior other safety, is out tonight. Williams is really the physical element on the back end of their defense. I was saying earlier, Vanderbilt forces the punt, has the phantom penalty, as you said, two plays later, touchdown. Now 13 to nothing in this environment. It is critical, this offense response. Williams being attended to by the athletic trainer and good to see him get up. Been a lot of changes in that back end defensively for Georgia with the season long suspension so far being served by Bakari Rambo being one and they've had a bunch of other issues as well. There's Rambo on the sidelines. He's one of their key players in the backfield defensively. Miss games because of uh, unspecified team violations. Last year, one of the most improved players on the team. Yeah, right now, the back end of the secondary does not have an interception on the season. You saw the number eight a season ago, 13 in his career for Rambo. First and 10 coming up for Vanderbilt. Team that played Georgia pretty much even last year, right down to the dying seconds before losing 33-28. Stacy again between the tackles this time and stopped up after a gain of about one. We're still within the number of points that a competitor can make up in one race. So that one going right down to the wide. And now it's Georgia's defense in the fast lane. Sacked by Jarvis Jones. Four and a half now in the season for him. What's remarkable on game film is how quickly he gets point A to point B many times on line stunts like this one. You have a polling tight end there whose job is to kick out on the other side. He can't even get through the mess. 
You know all those drills at the combine, those cone drills? How quick can you get right. around the cones? This guy's going to blow it up in Indianapolis. 6'3", 240 pounds. Loss of five, third and 14. And another flag. Now this is becoming an epidemic. All star. Offense. Number 52. Eight. Five yards. Still Eight third down. Penalties already against Vandy. Take a look at the big nose tackle there, Avery Jones. He's actually an end slid into tackle in that front. Why? Because they want Jarvis Jones one on one. You think those tackles can feel the influence of number 29? Take a look at him here. Look at the width and the depth outside that tackle. Coming in with a little bit of pressure. And Rodgers wisely throws it away. He had nobody to throw it to. And it's fourth and long. They'll have to punt from their own end zone. So when you have a defensive end that's causing that amount of chaos, what do you do as an offensive coordinator? Screen, draw, try to get him up the field. The problem is the rest of his buddies around him all smelled that screen pass and nowhere to go for Rodgers. We've seen this at the NFL level, too. It's yep. why they are such a commodity in number one. Demarcus Ware, Clay Matthews, when you have that kind of force, it just not, Im not only impacts the rest of your front seven, but is obvious and evidence tonight that offensive line, too. Richard Kent punting one yard deep in his own end zone, his third punt of the night. Remember, Malcolm Mitchell had that nice punt return last time for Georgia. A high spiral. A fair catch called at the 43-yard line. We think it was a fair catch that he called. He seemed to have that arm up in the air, a 45-yard punt. Nothing on the return, and the fans booing, voicing their displeasure here. Well, your eyes from a distance were exactly right, Mark. That arm is up. In a tough quarter for the guys <laughs> in stripes. <laughs> They're not lying. I mean, it's not their fault they've had to throw all these procedural penalties. Those have been obvious. But the block punt or the punt penalty and then this, you got to protect, don't you? Don't you have to protect yeah. that player when he puts his arm up and concedes and waves himself off and to take that contact after the fair catch? That should be another 15. Yeah. I think they're just tired of throwing all these penalties on Vandy. Trying to keep it moving here. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs. They're on 43. Murray completes it to King. And a first down in Vandy territory at the 45 yard line. He picks up 12. The senior leader punctuates a very successful first 15 minutes for the Georgia Bulldogs as they lead 13 nothing at the end of the first quarter. They got their hats on straight today and their big boy pants too. Back with more after this. Welcome back everyone to ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Miller Lite. Under the lights, it's the SEC on ESPN from Sanford Stadium, Athens, Georgia. One of the great spots across the college football landscape for college football games. And a sellout crowd of over 93,000 on hand watching the home team lead 13-0. First down, the toss is to Gurley. And Gurley gets down to the 40 yard line. You know, look at the great job this offense has done, not only this game, but the entire season, averaging over 47 points a game. Aaron Murray, the trigger man, has taken his leadership to another level. Freshman All American a couple of years ago, increased accuracy dating back to training camp a couple of months ago in the summer, and he has continued to improve. Second and five. And it helps when you have talented freshman like that to give the ball to Gurley for the first down he picks up seven that's exactly right and it's talent at your receiver position it's two freshmen that take some of the load off but the fundamental work you're absolutely spot on when you put his film on from his freshman year to his sophomore year to his junior year there's been an evolution there's been an attention to detail for him and Mike Bobo was very honest with us he said about 13 points better through training camp with his accuracy and that's a credit to his fundamental work Malcolm Mitchell not on defense on offense makes the catch but got rocked back at the 41 yard line Carl Butler making the tackle Malcolm Mitchell cut a long pass last week and there's been a little bit of a 
an inner fight amongst the coaching staff, a, a, a cordial one at that, to see what side of the ball he plays on, Brock. Freshman All-SEC a season ago, the second leading receiver for the Bulldogs last year, big play threat. There's visions here in Athens that he can grow into what Champ Bailey did, and that's play about 100 snaps a game. Wouldn't surprise me as this year evolves, he gets to that point. Watching from the sidelines on this play. Murray hands it off to Gurley. Nice cut back down to the 28-yard line. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you. A Taco Bell studio update. Perhaps we have a shootout in Tallahassee. This game on ABC, Florida State hosting Clemson. The Tigers scored first. Lonnie Pryor with the answer. All tied up, 7-all, 7.30 to play in the first quarter. Third down and six coming up for the quarterback Aaron Murray, now in grad school. Looking towards his master's degree. And taking the defense to school here. Bennett with the reception. Looks like he got enough for the first down. At about the 22-yard line, they picked up seven on the play. When I talk about improved fundamentals, watch this evening his eyes and his feet. Those are the two areas he really wanted to grow and focus. The eyes, I think, has come a little bit easier because he sees the game very, very well. But it's the feet getting off of his toes, a better base, a better power source to really throw the ball with his legs and use that energy. And he's gotten so much better at that. First and 10, looking into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, King. You know power pitchers throw 90 miles an hour with their legs. The great power pitchers. And look at Murray finish on this throw. The delivery, the strength. It is the conviction of knowing where to go, but he is so much better fundamentally driving that football. That's a skinny post thrown on the dot. The extra point caroms off of the upright and through the uprights. Good. And Georgia leads it 20 to nothing. Aaron Murray out of Tampa, Florida, putting up some impressive numbers. Tavares King, they call him Grandpa, fifth year senior with the score. Back with more right after this. Aaron Murray, a perfect eight for eight for 70 yards and a touchdown. His eyes. 2020 vision right now Brock. and they tell the story seeing the single safety I'm knowing I know I'm throwing that skinny post so let me look down the field initially to create and open that window and then the drive through the fundamental work all paying off paying dividends and right now Georgia in complete control and I got to tell you you watch a bit of their game film this season and Florida Atlantic and Buffalo and even Missouri they were slow starters the exact opposite tonight, and they have ignited this crowd. Well, the Commodores gave them reason to be a little bit on edge coming in, dating back to that close finish last year. Vanderbilt on their heels right now. This one's going to come back out to the 25 yard line. Wesley Tate in the backfield. Behind Jordan Rogers. Rogers to pass. Delivers a strike for the first down at about the 38-yard line. Nice catch by Jordan Matthews, who last year had a touchdown in this game against George off a halfback option. Picked up 13. Cannot panic right now. I know it's all one-sided. It's 20 to nothing. It's eight penalties. Everything is going the wrong way. The worst thing that you can do as an offense is think, I've got to get it all back right now and force the issue. Just continue to do your job as he did on that last series, throwing the screen away on third down, like that on first down, hitting it on time. Tate takes a direct snap and drops it. Maybe it was part of the plan. Brought down hard after a gain of five by Brandon Smith. Offensively, Vanderbilt just doesn't seem to be in rhythm tonight. Yeah, eight penalties will do that. The noise and the speed and the force with which the Bulldogs play and also is a significant part of the struggles this evening. How do you explain Wesley Tate just dropping the direct snap like that, too? Vassar shaken up on that last play. Second and six. 
Rodgers under duress and wisely throws it out of bounds. Chris Boyd was the closest person there. John Jenkins, a little bit of pressure, and Jenkins, a great story, 6'3", 358. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I'm not going to try and lift him up and tell you. that roll out? 358. And did you see him in the backfield? That's why he's number 14 on Mel Kuyper's big board. Number five on Todd McShay. He will be a high draft pick. And you love the way at 360 he moves not only laterally, but as you saw there, impacting the pass. That's dynamic stuff. That, that number just doesn't fit him. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> That's single digit stuff for a guy 37. I think triple digits would fit on that jersey. As a big man. A lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball for the Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> they got a lot of bite in that bark tonight. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Tailgating Staples, Kingsford Charcoal, and Walmart Choice Premium Steaks. And for your chance to win the ultimate tailgate trip, go to ESPN.com slash Kingsford. Third down and six for Vanderbilt coming up down 20 to nothing. Mark Jones along with Brock Stewart. Maria Taylor down to the sidelines. Now, how big is it for them to have to well, convert? It, it's gigantic because Georgia's had so much success offensively. They're starting in spread here. If you don't have it, Jordan's got to keep the play alive with his athleticism. Empty formation, four receivers. Look at five on this play. Fumble. And Rodgers falls on it. They implode again back at the 37-yard line. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. All right, Wendy, uh, boy, I tell you, you can't blame Richard Kent. He has been punting the ball extremely well. Drives Mitchell all the way back to the goal line. And Georgia going to be trapped inside their five-yard line. Wonderful job by Richard Kent. A 60-yard punt. Maybe the lone bright spot tonight for the Commodores. This one uh, was in the air for so long, it should have had a movie on it. <laughs> Back with more after this. <laughs> 20 to nothing, the Bulldogs leading the Commodores. 10.36 to go in the first half. Jarvis Jones, folks, what a game already tonight. His life indelibly changing. Halloween in 2009, playing for USC his freshman year against Oregon. He injured his neck on this play, trying to make the tackle. Now, although he walked off the field after this play, there is number 51. It was a long road to return to the field, and, and that's tonight's FaceTime profile brought to you by Edward Jones. He transferred, released from his scholarship from USC after being diagnosed with a back condition, a spinal condition, and then transferred to Georgia and has started all 14 games. First team All-American last year and uh, number one on Mel Kuyper's big board right now. Talked about his desire to return to college and play one more season. You can see the great impact it's had on his team. And first down. It's Marshall brought down just shy of the five yard line. But when you go back to Jones, he talked about looking at guys like Demarcus Ware, Dwight Freeney, Clay Matthews, guys that he admires playing. Who, who do you see him like? I'll feel free to say all of the above. <laughs> well, he's a little bit unique, and, and Coach Grantham does a really nice job of putting him in different positions so you can't zero in on target on him. His versatility is rare. Look at this, another flag. Arthur Lynch moving up front. False start. False start. False start. False start. Offense. 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 Number 88. 88. After, After distance to the goal. goal. Second down. Second down. That one against uh, Arthur Lynch. Starting tight end. And offensively, it's been a pretty good performance so far, despite those penalties for Georgia. And be leery of the play action pass. They love to take shots in early downs. On second and 11. They run it again. That was Marshall picking up two. Let's get back to Aaron Murray. We started talking about him being a grad student. student. Part of some of the coursework he's taking right now had him studying the psychology of leadership. And he's taken those classroom skills and tried to apply it into his 
his football team. Well, Coach Bobo said the offensive coordinator, he's always been an incredibly positive guy, but this year he's adding the element of that field general, being able to get and command and, and get in guys' faces when, when need be. Very wide open over the middle, complete to Marlon Brown. And let's go to Maria for more on the, the newfound leadership of Aaron Murray. Yeah, Brock, you mentioned the coaching staff telling him he needs to be more demanding, but he actually handed out questionnaires to all of his teammates, a part of one of his classes, and the one aspect of leadership that he was a little low on was being demanding, challenging his teammates. So that's been a focus for him this year, guys. A guy who's been uh, very resilient going back to his high school career in Tampa. First down and 10. This is Marshall stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. And now that's twice. That's Chase Garnum, the middle linebacker, was an outside backer a season ago with Chris Marv. And defensive coordinator Bob Shoup talked about the void left with Marv that Grant, that Garnum needed to be downhill, that he needed to just not react to those blitzes. We saw them earlier taking on those blocks. That's a much better job on this series from Garnum. On second and 11. Murray still perfect, nine for nine passing. Hands it off to Marshall. Turns the corner, brought down a couple of yards shy of the first down. Got a good block from Dallas Lee, picking up nine on the play. And part of the reason for Murray as well, from a leadership pers perspective, was a season ago, Ben Jones was a three-year starter up front at, at center and was really the voice and was really the player that was demanding up front. With a lot of new faces, freshman running backs. Murray has taken that role on and flourishing right now. Just don't mention his height. 6-1. But tall enough to complete another pass. Still perfect as we go back to Wendy Nix in the studio. Mark, thank you. We check on Kansas State and Oklahoma. Landry Jones here, but he's sacked by Justin Tuggle. A fumble ensues, and Jarrell Childs recovers into the end zone. He goes 7-3 K-State with the lead. Clemson has scored again. They lead 14-7 over Florida State on ABC. This is Malcolm, another one of those talented backs. And Ken Malcolm rumbles deep in Vandy territory. He picks up 29. And what a nice job by the left guard, Dallas Lee, getting out in front. Look at the big fella. He was limited all week with an ankle injury. You don't have to always be ferocious. Just get your 300 pounds in front of those secondary players. Marshall showing you that extra gear that he has. Down to the 24. Murray's making this look easy, isn't he? It's like so stealing calm, right now. So poised in that pocket. 10 for 10. Keeps it himself. He gets down safely at the 17 yard line. Make that the 18. Picked up about six. I'd be a little careful about that. You said got down safely. I don't know if I'm running Aaron Murray a whole bunch. You're trying to redshirt. Hunter Mason right now, his backup. Christian LeMay, the redshirt freshman, really the only other guy behind him. I don't know, 20 nothing with those two backs behind me. <laughs> if I'm going to pull that ball down and take on contact if I'm Aaron Murray. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Make that ninth play of the drive. Toss to Malcolm. And a first down at the 11-yard line. Boy, they have a troika of talented backs. Gurley, Marshall, and now Malcolm coming at him. And look at your right guard, Burnett, as well. We ID'd him earlier, getting through on the run play. And whenever that offensive line is getting out that easily in the space, getting their body onto people, that is just a complete mismatch. You know what this feels like to me right now? What's that? Remember that confrontation we talked about a year ago between these two teams? Georgia at home wanted to make a statement very First clear to Vandy that they're well. still Vandy, and Georgia is still Georgia, and they're establishing it at the line of scrimmage. Down Murray, complete, down to the four-yard line. That one to Tavares King, who had a touchdown, picks up eight here. And King, coming out of the ball game, apparently shaken up a little bit. Does that make sense? We showed yeah. the confrontation at yeah. Vanderbilt last year between the coaches. And Georgia didn't do a lot of talking this week, but they're doing it on the field right now. Marshall. Picks up the first down down to the one yard line. Got three on the play. And it's first and goal for the Bulldogs. John L. Thomas for Vanderbilt said, hey, we see this game as unfinished business. We're going to come out 
with high intensity, Justin high expectations, Georgia. and no fear, but the they've shown none of the above so far. Murray, touchdown, Murray. Georgia. The Bulldogs rhythmically, methodically, march down the field on James Franklin's defense and makes it 26 to nothing. That's a sinking feeling as a head coach when someone rams it 95 yards right down your throat, executing flawlessly in the passing game and then just dominating the point of attack. The extra point makes it 27 to nothing. Hey folks, Georgia has scored touchdowns on its first four possessions. Aaron Murray right now, the picture of efficiency, a perfect 11 of 11 for 111 yards. With the introduction of Ugga One in 1956, the official mascot at the University of Georgia has earned distinction as one of the most celebrated live mascots in sports. This honor had been bestowed on only eight lucky Bulldogs until Ugga Nine was introduced to the Sanford Stadium crowd last weekend during the traditional passing of the collar ceremony. Welcome to our university. I'll tell you what, it's turning into dog days right now for Vandy. You see Ugga me mugging at the end of that? He was. Day? Don't come into my house, Vandy. <laughs> I don't think you can push us around in here. I remember one of those Bulldogs snapped at an Auburn player a few years back. This is the best Georgia's played all season long by, I think, a long shot as well in both phases. Well, sometimes those early college football rankings can be a little counterfeit and spurious, but Georgia seemingly worthy of that number five spot so far. Here's the kick in Brian Kimbrough on the return. Vanderbilt down 27 to nothing. Rodgers, who got the start tonight in place of the previous starter, Carter Samuels, just two of five passing for 21 yards. And the question now begs just how long is that leash of James Franklin's? Rodgers, incomplete, broken up at the last minute and almost intercepted. Intended for Jordan Matthews, broken up nicely by Brandon Smith. Those two have had a nice battle tonight going. Very physical. Matthews, 6'3", 205 pound, wide out, and you love how he elevates. Look how high he is off of the ground to go up and get it. But Smith isn't going to back down. And one thing about Georgia, Smith's a senior. Washington, Second Jenkins, ten. Jones, six of the seven. I'm going to count Jarvis Jones as a senior. This is a veteran crew built to win right now. Zach Stacy in the backfield, little option game here. Rodgers keeps it for little or no gain on the play. Brock, I want to ask you this. How surprised are you that we haven't seen some of the, the trickery, some of the gadget plays by Vandy yet? I am a little surprised, but they've self-destructed so often with all of the penalties. It's it's almost affected any rhythm whatsoever, even those, even getting the rhythm of taking those shots and, and making those aggressive plays. They don't want to be in many third and nines. But we talked about how they have been inefficient in third down conversions this year. What a fight to Jones is going to be everywhere. Now they got him in the middle. This is where he had the pick nearly six at Missouri. The guy is unbelievably versatile. He's coming with some heat. Rodgers has a lot of time and nobody open. Locked down after a gain of one on the play, but it's fourth down and long coming up. Number 93, Avery Jones there to make the stop. Who, by the way, is a senior. Jenkins in the middle is a senior. Jarvis Jones, a redshirt junior, 23. He's going to be gone after this year. As I said earlier, no excuses here in Athens. This is a team defensively, and when they get Rambo back in Ogletree, which should be next week, I know Alabama's front and center of the yep. conversation and LSU defensively, but Georgia is right there with them. Especially when they put it together like they are tonight. Maybe looking to get another good punt from Kent, which they do. He airmails this one all the way back to the 25-yard line or in the vicinity. And another flag thrown on the play. Well, you talked about the lofty number five ranking by Georgia. Looking to improve to 4-0 on the season. Two previous times when they started 4-0, they went on to win the SEC championship during Mark Rick's tenure here.
during the return. Illegal block in the back. Number 25 on the receiving team. That penalty is half the distance from the end of the run. First down. Well, Mark Rick told us yesterday during our meetings that the team motto this year is our team, our time, no regrets. They don't have any so far. Yeah, pivotal game there in the ACC. Mark Rick, the former offensive coordinator under Bobby Bowden for so many years at Florida State. Former quarterback at the University of Miami who had a big win today at Georgia Tech. A big game coming up tonight on out on the West Coast, Arizona and Oregon. Looking forward to getting back to the hotel partner and watching that track meet. Why do I feel like Arizona and UCLA 3 and 0 not really been there before can they continue it whereas Oregon like Georgia tonight at home I expect to really step on the gas right now leading 27 nothing first down and 10 Murray with the play fake and still perfect Luton. Rantavia swooping out to the 38 and partner you're, you're shaking your head. It's just surgical <laughs> and it starts with his vision. It starts always for a quarterback when you're looking down the field controlling the safety and every time that they have gone single safety one safety in the back opening up those creases Aaron Murray's thrown it accurately on time and a perfect 12 for 12. First and 10 out of the 39. Hands it off to Gurley. And Gurley picks up about two on the play, but back to uh, Murray, still perfect, 12 for 12. He talked about his great experience this past summer at the Manning Passing Camp down in Mississippi, where a bunch of the elite quarterbacks collegiately gather every summer. And uh, said that he really worked on his footwork and brought some of those drills back here to Georgia, too. No wasted movement. That's the other thing that jumps out this evening. He carries that ball high, he's decisive, he gets it from point A to point B. This is the first time I've seen Murray in person. And his arm strength has really grown from his freshman year, his sophomore year. And that only comes with taking the extra time and the diligence, as you said, to be committed to the fundamental work. And then, oh, by the way, your defense is fantastic and your run game is really <laughs> yeah. good and your offensive line is dominating. I think it's worth pointing out. Let's remember something about Vanderbilt here. Their last five SEC opponents. They've not been beat by more yeah, than six points. Close games, yeah. And even against these guys, Georgia, for the last six games between these two have been decided by ten or fewer points. So they've been in the ball game a lot. That's Janelle Thomas, who was the player that was quoted earlier this week from Vanderbilt that said, "We're going to come out with high intensity, high expectations, and no fear. We're going to make this week of practice the best week of practice yet." Well, it's the game that counts. See how he got rolled up on. Unfortunately, it was his own teammate, the other defensive end, Walker May, that just rolls right into the legs of Thomas. Thomas, six foot and uh, just 250, facing those behemoths up front from Georgia. Second and seven. Is the first incompletion of the night. 12 of 13 now, broken up nicely by Andre Howe. And he knows that he just wanted that comeback thrown a little bit further back to the sidelines. If you're Rick, do you bench him now? <laughs> <laughs> no, but if I'm Vanderbilt, I think it's time I heat up this blitz package of mine. Third and seven. And with the sidelines, offensive coordinator Mike Bobo. With the calls. Murray going up top, taking a shot. And incomplete. Rantavius Wooten was right there, but just a little bit long. Trey Wilson in on the coverage for Vanderbilt. And indeed, Vanderbilt brings the pressure on third down. They leave the one-on-one. -on -one. And I love the loft on that pass. A lot of fundamental teaching points tonight at the quarterback position. Loft meaning what exactly? He sees the blitz, so I got to throw it just a little bit earlier and just the loft, a lot of air allowing my receiver the opportunity to go run underneath it. Colin Barber with his first punt of the night. It's off a high towering spiral. And it'll be short of the 20 yard line as we go back to Wendy Nix in the studio. Wendy?
Mark, coming up on the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report, it's Tigers v. Tigers on ESPN. We'll check on LSU and Auburn. We're tied up in Tallahassee. And defense, the name of the game with Notre Dame and Michigan. We'll have the highlights. I'm joined by Todd McShay and Robert Smith at the half. All right, Wendy, and back here, the ball placed at the 24-yard line of the Commodores. First down and 10 with, yeah, three timeouts remaining, Brock. You circled it. And the two-minute drill here. You've got all the timeouts, plenty of time. And just to feel good about yourself going into halftime, put a drive together, even if it's a field goal, something so you're not looking at that big zero on the scoreboard. Rodgers keeps it. It's a nice play with his legs. Out short of the first down at about the 32-yard line. Got about eight on the play. How much of that score is on his shoulders? There, there's some elements that always come with playing the position that you wear it. You own it. You have got to get it done and make some of those plays down the field. But eight penalties, procedural errors behind the sticks almost on every single possession. It's hard to point a big finger at him. Second and short. He completes the pass to Boyd. And Boyd with a first down into Georgia territory at the 46. Now this is where you would like to see the command of a fifth-year senior get everybody to the line of scrimmage for one of the few occasions you actually have Georgia a little bit on their heels as the crowd can sense it and feel it, and they come to life. Crowd coming alive a little bit here, Georgia. Rogers completes another one out of bounds and complete. What's happened to the Razorbacks this year? Dysfunction. Yeah. In the offseason, carrying into the season. Second and one. And this is a good drive here. You're nearing field, field goal range. Be smart with the football. Rogers given time. Delivers to Boyd again. Complete. And deep into Georgia territory at the 13 yard line. Three timeouts remaining, 110 to go in the half. Jordan doing a very nice job of anticipating a lot of zone coverage here by Georgia. They've laid off on the blitz in the final two minutes here. And Jordan is throwing that ball before his receivers, leading them beautifully, getting them here awfully close to end zone. An area of the field they have also really struggled to score touchdowns. Rodgers completes it to Boyd again. Nice move down to the nine-yard line. Got about five on the play. Herrera making the stop. Under a minute to go, 50 seconds. And I like the no timeout. Look at the hands on the hips of Georgia defensively. Many times you call a timeout, you let that defense gather. Plenty of time still left with those three in your pocket. Rodgers into the end zone. And incomplete. Intended for Quintero. That stops the clock with 39 seconds, pardon me, 30 seconds to go. Sean Williams back in the ball game in on coverage. Third and five. Are you looking at uh, going for it? Or what part of the field you're in? How much does that factor no, in? As, as I said, you want to get points. You don't want to look at a zero, and you want to, want to reward a good drive here. But just four of 12 on the season scoring touchdowns. I'll say it again, imperative to be smart with the football. Out of the backfield, Zach Stacy with nowhere to go. They'll lose a few yards back to the 13. Sean Williams there to make the stop on the play. And now I think you got to let that clock run, take your time out, and kick your field goal. Fourth and eight coming up. You're staring at a fourth and one. Maybe there's a conversation. Time out on the field. Harry Spear, their place kicker, seven of eight on the year. Fourth down and eight. Georgia leading 27 to nothing. Fourth down coming up for Vanderbilt. And Rodgers has given way to the place kicker, Kerry Spear. Hindsight's always 20-20, but what would you have done here on this last couple of plays? I, I don't mind that. The screen pass, I like the call. You expect pressure. You've got to take the three points here. You've got to go into halftime with some good feelings. This one from 29 yards out. Gary Spear puts Vanderbilt on the board. With 20 seconds to go, James Franklin's team finally scores.
There's a big difference for Rich Rodriguez. He has a fifth year senior in Matt Scott versus Jim Mora with Brett Hundley, just a red shirt freshman. They got knocked off by Oregon State even at home. Going into Autzen Stadium, a night game. I think Oregon's been a little Usain Bolt, to be honest with you, in the first three. I think they've shut it down pretty early. There's a lot of gas in that tank, and there's going to be a lot of points scored tonight. It comes down to the 18 yard line. The first down and 10. Mark Richt has taken Georgia to 11 consecutive bowl games. Last year they finished up 10 and 4, 7 and 1 in the East Division in the SEC, winning the East. They won 13 consecutive regular season games. Their two losses in the SEC title and the bowl game. They've been on a heck of a run. Expect to take a knee here. You'll get the ball to start the second half. And hope to continue what you've done offensively. We've been surgical in the past game. We've even gotten away a little bit from the run. Pretty much just a dominating effort for Georgia. Yeah, pretty good first half for the Bulldogs, especially Aaron Murray. Hit his first 12 passes for a total of 137 yards. They dominated that first half 27 to 3. Right now, let's join Wendy Nix, Todd McShay, and Robert Smith back in the studio for the Outback. at Sanford Stadium. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Miller Lite. It's the SEC on ESPN. And the 73rd matchup between these two teams, Georgia and Vanderbilt. Right now it's been all Georgia in the first half. They lead it 27-3. The Bulldogs will receive the kick here in the second half. Mark Jones chopping it up along with Brock Heward and Maria Taylor down the sidelines joining us in just a few moments there was so much anticipation Brock in wake of what happened at the end of last year's close 33 to 28 game between these two teams for a competitive game what was the most disappointing part of it from a Vanderbilt perspective in the first half it has to be the self destruction before the snap was ever taken nine penalties in that first half you can't do that you know Mono Imano, you're not good enough physically right now with where you're at. Now, you're recruiting really well. You're hoping to develop this talent, but you can't come in here and be penalized nine times. And then at the point of attack, Georgia just hammered them. 24 rushes to only 14 passes for the Bulldogs. And James Franklin knows it's the tackling, it's the getting downhill. And for a team that's priding itself right now on turning the page and being different in a different culture, you got to come out, you got to hit, and you got to be much more aggressive in the second half, regardless of what the score is. On the flip side, Aaron Murray and that Georgia Bulldog offense, very efficient in the first half. They piled up 303 total yards of offense. They couldn't have been much better. If you're going to go on the road within this conference, you have got to take at least one aspect of that offense away. You've got to be able to either stop the run, and put the game in Aaron Murray's hands or stop the pass and, and, and hope these young freshman running backs turn it over in that first half. Georgia was able to do whatever they wanted to do. Short kick down to the 16 yard line. It's Merritt Hall. Back up fullback and Hall takes it out near the 30 yard line. Time now for tonight's game track brought to you by John Hancock. And it was a one two punch. It was Gurley. The powerhouse and Marshall the speed demon north to south with the big play after a phantom penalty on a punt Aaron Murray was surgical no hesitation he's hitching he's throwing and he's aggressive down the field and then Jarvis Jones he showed you why he's number one on Mel Kuyper's big board it was more against the run in the first half than it was against the pass but multi-dimensional player let's see how Murray starts this second half of play connecting on his first 12 passes to begin the game, he tosses it to Gurley. Great cutback for a first down. Finally tripped up at the 47-yard line. Got a nice block from Dallas Lee, the starting guard, whose name we've called a lot so far tonight. And they've done a really nice job, and you can see Dallas Lee pointing to his hip there. That's dependent on what the defensive front is. He's uncovered, allows him to pull, get out there, and you're exactly right, Mike Mark, three or four times in this first half. 
And now leading in the second half, those big uglies <laughs> coming out front, making the jobs easier for the young freshman. I, I thought he was pointing his, to his posterior, actually, on that play. <laughs> The bootleg action, Murray. Oh, in and out of the arms of Lynch, his intended receiver. Should have been caught. Hey, Maria, what did James Franklin have to say at the half? Guys, he was actually kind of impressed with his team. He says right now Jordan Rodgers is the most decisive and confident he's ever seen him play. He said the team struggled with cadences early because of the crowd noise, and they're beating themselves up with penalties. He also said it's going to be a key for his defense to make plays when they're one-on-one, -on -one, especially as quarterbacks, because they're trying to load up the box and slow down this run game that Georgia has. Yeah, they haven't been able to slow them much so far, Maria. Second and ten. The short side of the field, Bennett. And it across midfield picked up about three on the play brought down by Hal. Well, if Coach Franklin is accurate there, now you've got Georgia into a third and seven. And if you're going to create one on ones, that means you're going to pressure here on this third down situation. Problem with Aaron Murray, he sees those pressures, he makes the appropriate checks, and he makes you pay on the back end. On third and seven, they bring some heat. It's tipped and almost picked up. Boy, in this kind of situation, Trey Wilson has to make that interception. He had one last week against Presbyterian, returned it 100 yards for the touchdown. And they could have used that. Broken up, and nonetheless, they get the fourth down, Brock. Yeah, in fact, he's had three that he's taken back to the house. You're 100% on. You have to find a way to make that play. Just watch after this punt, the difference in field position, even if he catches that and falls down at the 45 versus where this drive is going to start. And he got a block on special teams last year against Georgia. They don't get one here. And they bounce it out of the bounds right around the 20 yard line. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. All right, Wendy, back here. The ball marked at the 15 yard line. Jordan Rogers comes out for the first series here in the second half. He got the start this week after giving way to Austin Carter Samuels last week against Presbyterian College. Here's the counter. Zach Stacy picks up about two, brought down by Malcolm Mitchell. It'll be second down and seven. And what Coach Franklin was talking to Maria about coming out of halftime was how Jordan, especially on that last drive, got the ball out of his hand early. He anticipated, he threw his receivers open. Now let's see what Georgia does. My guess, a lot more press man to man. They go downfield and into coverage. Incomplete. Intended for Kraus. We've got the Georgia coaches next to us here in the booth. They didn't like giving up those three points before the half. And it was a lot of zone coverage and a two-minute drill that Jordan took advantage of. But he's got to know here to begin the second half, and especially on third downs, where the Commodores were just one of seven in the first half. He's got to expect more pressure, and they better keep an eye on where number 29 is defensively. Kraus split wide to the top of your screen. Jordan Matthews has been the go-to guy all year for the Commodores. Rodgers with nowhere to go, tiptoes out of bounds, and hit by who else? Number 29, Jarvis Jones. A pickup of three, and it's fourth down coming up. There's a good look at Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator. A lot of his energy, his passion. You know who he's coached for. The story's out. It's Nick Saban. He's been around some good ones. Dom Capers, Wade Phillips, just about the best defensive minds. Frank Beamer as well. Really giving a lot of credit to those men that taught him this game, and they play one way, and that's aggressively. And number 29 is the engine of their defense. Malcolm Mitchell back at his own 30 yard line. Kent with the punt. And Mitchell with the fair catch back at the 36, a 43 yard punt. Nothing on the return. The Bulldogs with the ball when we come back under the lights at Athens. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. You know, Uga had uh, disappeared, it seemed like, Brock Heward, uh, midway through the second quarter. Might have been a little dehydrated. Some of that water didn't get into his mouth we saw earlier. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Is that a good-looking dog? Very. Very <laughs> Does that make me the beholder? <laughs> That's a happy-looking pup. <laughs> 
27-3, second offensive series of the half. And Murray hands it off to his strapping tailback. Todd Gurley all the way out near midfield gets the first down at the 47-yard line. Just a freshman came into the ball game averaging about 10 yards per carry. You know what you don't do? Tackle this kid high. Uh, no, sir. That's about three yards after the initial contact. Now Keith Marshall in the backfield. For the half of that thunder and lightning connection. Here's the reverse. Mitchell. Mitchell on the move. Got a nice block. And pushed out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Marlon Brown, one of those wide receivers, blocking well downfield in a pickup of 16. And all of that heavy run, you knew this was coming. Just look at the linebackers. They all bite. You lose contain. And 100 snaps. Champ Is that Bailey. realistic? Back to play in the 100 day, snaps. Back in the day, Champ Bailey, that's what he got to through special teams, offense, and defense. He figures 65 defensively, maybe 15 or 20 offensively. The other 10 in special teams. Yeah, I think that's realistic down the road. Early back in the ball game and brought down behind the line of scrimmage, Jared Morris. How much Champ Bailey do you see in the? Uh, in Mitchell, I mean, that's a unique guy that you all talk about. Well, that, that's <laughs> that's at the very top. That's a very high ceiling. Very few have ever been to that level. So he's got room to grow. He's just a sophomore. He's got to be able to handle that. The offensive meetings, the defensive meetings, the special teams meetings, you know, the burden of all that responsibility, plus just physically having the conditioning level to do it. Wouldn't surprise me down the road if that's their goal. Murray completes the pass to Gurley out of the backfield. Got some real estate ahead of him. Early brought down to the 22, another hold on first down. They get to 23, picked up 13 on the play. Hey, the freshman catches the ball well, too, out of the backfield. It's not Marcus Lattimore. He's a special beast. But remember when Marcus Lattimore came on the scene as a freshman, it was the same story, the broken tackles. In fact, I think it was a Georgia game a few years back where Lattimore had 30-some carries as a freshman, and they counted how many broken tackles. You just one-on-one, -on -one, you got to hold on for dear life and find a way to get him down. And Mitchell in the backfield now. Murray has it tipped and batted down to the line of scrimmage by Baron Dixon. And Dixon, one of those guys that those Vanderbilt coaches really like. He say he looks like your typical SEC lineman up front. 6'4", 300 pounds, and if you get stalemated inside, you get your hands up. You got to get your eyes into the quarterback. That's well done as a sophomore. They got a few more of those kids that look the part, but they got to grow into it. On the run, this is Marshall. Marshall picked up about five on the play. Interesting story with Marshall. During training camp and before Isaiah Crowell was suspended and dismissed from the team, they became pretty good friends and uh, recently got a text message from Crowell and the text said hey congratulations keep playing hard keep playing well. This backfield in pretty good shape right now. Murray delivers another strike. Down to about the five Chris Conley. And Murray gets up a little slow holding that right hand. A whole lot more pressure in the second half of Vanderbilt. That has been their answer to come out of the second half. One of the rare occasions to actually get a body on Aaron Murray. Doesn't matter. He still sees the coverage. You know what I love? He's never forcing it tonight. There's not really been, other than the, the tipped almost interception on the last drive, nothing even close to being forced. Early in the backfield takes the handoff and brought down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and goal to go. Lohr making the stop on the play, but Murray from a very uh, athletic family. His dad, Dennis, played baseball in the Blue Jays organization. Brother Josh spent five years in the Brewer system. His mom, Lauren, ran track in college. Second and goal. Bulldogs spreading out the defense here with five receivers. Murray with all kinds of time. And throws it out of bounds. The closest receiver was Michael Bennett. So an interesting third and goal. What do you figure he's upset oh, about? He's really upset at his tight end there who was run blocking. The lack of communication there that for some reason the big tight end Lynch who had a drop earlier. 
didn't even run her out. And that's the example of the leadership. That's exactly more vocal right. we talked well, about. Maybe a year that. ago, two years ago, he wouldn't ever have said anything. Very positive guy. But now it's demanding. Now it's challenging. Now, hey, we are set up number five in America, and we've got to be on point on every detail. Tenth play of the drive, third and goal. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Brown. He wanted to go to the tight end. He looked that way, sees it, doesn't have it, and comes right back. And there's the difference with arm strength. He doesn't make that throw two years ago with that kind of velocity. The extra point good. And Mark Rick said that his next area of development with Murray is going to be being able to grasp and make a big play when it counts most on third and goal. Makes the pass for the touchdown to Brown. ESPN College Football Primetime, brought to you by Hyundai. Go online and show your loyalty to your school at HyundaiShowYourLoyalty.com. And Avis. Look inside the football museum here on campus. And one of the greats of college football, not just at Georgia, Herschel Walker. Look at those unbelievable numbers. How about 35 rushes a game? Who's calling call the plays? Yeah. <laughs> Smart fella, keep getting him the ball. <laughs> kind of a trickle down effect from the NFL level where those just one dimensional backs, one guy carrying the load, you're seeing less of and less of. And I think a perfect example right here with your two freshmen, the ability to keep them fresh throughout the season because there just are not many guys built by Herschel Walker. Kimbrough at the five. Nice return of 21 yards out to the 26. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. All right, Wendy, back here. First down and 10. Zach Stacy in the backfield, and Rogers on the run. Trying to inspire his team, picks up about seven. Let's go downstairs to Maria for more. Yeah, guys, on the Vanderbilt sideline, the body language says we haven't really given up, and James Franklin said at half, he reminded his team of playing Florida last year. They went in the half, down 17-0, and scored 21 points in the second half. He's trying to get his team fired back up to have some kind of comeback like that, guys. Yeah, a different set of uh, circumstances with the number five ranked team here in Georgia. Second and three. That's Stacy the deep back. Rogers given time up top and caught by Matthews. He got in behind Malcolm Mitchell and Jordan Matthews with the longest play of the game so far for Vanderbilt. One of the rare explosive plays down the field. Georgia playing a lot more man coming out here in the second half. Press coverage, and that's the one little detail that Malcolm Mitchell has to work on, especially against an accomplished receiver like Matthews. You better get your hands on him at the line of scrimmage. Does not get a good jam, and a perfectly thrown ball by Jordan Rogers. Remember, just four games into his career as a corner. Initially recruited as a wide receiver. Actually a DB. Rogers. A little wrestling going on downfield. No flag thrown and incomplete. Chris Boyd working against Damian Swan. You know, just going back to uh, the Malcolm Mitchell story, the defensive back for Georgia, the two way threat. He was actually recruited to play defensive back, and then in his senior year of high school, he had a great year, put up some wonderful stats as a wide receiver, and that's when he went to the coaches at Georgia and thought, hey, you know, I, I can do this two-way thing. How about 45 catches a season ago, and it was Alabama and Georgia at the very end. And I'm guessing the pitch from Mark Rick was, you can come in here and do whatever you want to do. <laughs> You're that gifted and talented. Second and 10. Little receiver screen complete to Matthews, but nowhere to go. He's brought down immediately by Herrera. And that bubble screen, such a big part of what Vanderbilt does, but when you get press man coverage, it takes you out of that. 
They're asking right now Vanderbilt to win down the field. Beat us with explosion plays. We like our athletes at Georgia better than your athletes at Vanderbilt. Rodgers has his man but missed him. Incomplete intended for Chris Boyd. Is this the type of scenario where you go for it here on fourth down down 34 to 3. I think it is now midway through the third quarter. It's one thing going into halftime to feel good about yourself. It's another thing here with just 22 minutes to play down 31. You're going to have to beat one on one coverage and you're going to have to block up that pocket. Six of 11 on the season on fourth down conversion. Backside pressure. Jones comes calling. Jarvis Jones shows you why he's an All-American. And number one on Mel Kuyper's NFL Big Board. And he's not had many chances where he comes just free. And I talked earlier about his angles. You know, linebackers will tell you every little piece of real estate's important. And when you got that kind of speed, well, you can do damage at the end. Hey folks, the DirecTV drive to the national championship bus has been traveling the country following the biggest stories in college football. Hey, earlier this week, the bus making stops in Baton Rouge and Auburn, and tonight it's made it stop right here in Athens, Georgia. Brock, I'm telling you, you get me in that top bunk, milk and cookies, <laughs> flat screen TV, college football, and I'm good, son. <laughs> you want to watch that Oregon Arizona oh, game in there? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, uh, I love what Rich Rodriguez has done this year in Tucson. Look at Todd Grantham there. You'd think his team is behind 34 to 3. Heath Marshall in the backfield behind Aaron Murray. Brown in motion. Brown again. Weaving his way. First and move. Trey Wilson saved the touchdown. You want to put a scare into Tennessee next week, South Carolina in a couple weeks. When you blitz, and as an offense, you can make them pay for that blitz. Oh, that scares defensive coordinators. And a blink, it's first and goal. Marshall gets the call and brought down at about the two yard line. Second and goal coming up. Young quarterbacks fear the blitz period in practice because guys are coming from everywhere, and I'm not seeing it. Veteran quarterbacks. Think of the Aaron Rodgers, the Tom Brady's, the Peyton Manning's. You know what they savor? Blitz. Blitz me. Go ahead. Oh, you're going to leave my guys in one-on-one? -on -one? You're going to give me shots down the field? They make you pay when you come after them. Credit that Georgia offensive line for giving them a pocket to throw, and they are just tearing apart this Vanderbilt blitz tonight. With all those explosive plays by Georgia. Straight ahead again. Marshall into the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> Oh, and I love the big fella, Burnett. And those guards have been active all night. Brown has a critical play down the field. Nothing more demoralizing to a defense than when you line up in base and you get run on, when you blitz and you get gassed. There's just nothing that the Vanderbilt defense can do right now against a red-hot Georgia offense. The second touchdown of the night for Keith Marshall. Former track star on a fast track right now, 41-3. Session of great ones. Garrison Hurst, the 1990 Conference Freshman of the Year. No Sean Moreno. 2007 Conference Freshman of the Year. And last season, Isaiah Kroll. Freshman of the Year. So uh, who's next, you might ask? One of these two guys, perhaps. Gurley or Marshall. A couple of friends from North Carolina talked about coming to school at the same place, going to Athens. Marshall committed first. Gurley followed soon after that. And the numbers have gone up ever since. Kimbrough on the return. 
And he's brought down at the 15-yard line. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. And uh, real quick, want to send out our prayers and thoughts to Reds manager Justin Baker that he recovers and gets well soon. Zach Stacy still on his feet. And a spirited run by Stacy out to the 30-yard line. Got about 15. Back to the night that Jarvis Jones has had. And he has been ubiquitous all over the field, sideline to sideline. And I love how he's played the run tonight. Five tackles, two for loss, constantly in that backfield. And it's the quickness, it's the burst. And then when you leave him one-on-one, -on -one, he punishes. Rodgers over the middle. Caught by Matthews. And Matthews still up into Georgia territory near the 35-yard line. It's been Matthews that's made the big plays for the Commodores tonight. That time picking up 31. And give some credit to Jordan Rodgers. He just took as vicious a shot as you're going to take right in the chops and standing strong and delivering. I'm going to be real curious to not just watch Jordan, but this team collectively. Is Rodgers playing to hold on to his job for next week? When you get benched a week prior, absolutely. That's how you got to think of it as a redshirt senior. Jack Stacy following his blocks. Picks up the first down, a gain of 12. But if James Franklin is going to preach, we're a different Vanderbilt. We're a different team. We're, I've got this edge. We're creating a different culture. And these final 20 minutes are critical. You can't see your team quit. You can't see your team concede anything. Back Stacy again. The call down to the 23-yard line. Stacy's the leading returning rusher in the SEC coming back this year. Had 174 last week against Presbyterian College. And don't forget, coming up next, big showdown in the Pac-12, number 22, Arizona. That's right, in the top 25. Take it on number three, Oregon. That game over on ESPN, 10.30 Eastern time kickoff. Wesley Tate in the game. Little counter. And Tate almost looked like a horse caller, but Tackle by number 52, uh, Herrera. Approaching four minutes to go here in the third quarter. And for Vandy, it's at Missouri, it's Florida, it's Auburn. That's why you can't quit in the final 20 minutes. Why you got to put together positive drives and feel good about yourself because the schedule is relentless. Third down, they're one of nine on third downs. Caught and just enough. For the first down, so Rodgers keeps the sticks moving with the pass to Josh Grady complete. Under four minutes to go. With that remaining schedule, you have to score touchdowns. It's been a bugaboo for James Franklin this season. 4-12 coming into tonight. 0 for 2 scoring touchdowns. When you get inside of the 20, you've got to get those one-on-one -on -one plays. Wesley Tate dotting the eye on the toss. And brought down at about the 15-yard line. It'll be fourth down. But oh, pardon me, no gain coming up. And Sanders Cummings making the stop. Interesting, you mentioned Vanderbilt and trying to be competitive, trying to create that culture. We have a Georgia player down in the field. Coach Franklin's team has been ahead going into the fourth quarter of every game so far this year. Yeah, that's what you got to remember on a tonight uh, on a night where they're getting spanked is that this is a team that had South Carolina on the ropes week one and lose 17 to 13. They go up to Northwestern and lose in the final minutes Northwestern 24 to 13. That's been so competitive in all these SEC games and that's a tough loss. That's a big boy. That's Avery Jones 6 3 and 308 one of those big ends in this 3 4 that does a nice job of keeping Jarvis Jones clean. But this is a different challenge to your point. They've been competitive. He wanted to get over the hump. You know, I asked him when, when I look at Vanderbilt to me and what he's trying to do, it's what Jim Harbaugh did at Stanford, where you've got to change a culture and identity. You've got to become bigger and faster and stronger and tougher, and especially on that offensive line. But Jim Harbaugh had those big wins. He won at USC. He got over the hump. And these are the ones you got to avoid where you just get manhandled like this on the road. Those close competitive games where you can preach getting over the hump, that's one thing. To come in here and get physically manhandled is another. Second and ten. 
Hodge is trying to make a play. He beats it at the 10 yard line. So who else but Jordan Matthews? Matthews, interestingly enough, uh, a distant relative of none other than Jerry Rice. Might want to get that uh, Rice highlight reel on right now. <laughs> that comeback highlight reel playing. Well, they've got to find another guy outside of Matthews. Last year, Chris Boyd, number eight, had eight touchdown receptions. But they've got to develop more explosive skill set. That is such a huge differentiator between these two teams. Fully evident tonight. Third and four. On the option. Tate with nowhere to go. And Georgia runs him down. Sean Williams pushes him out of bounds short of the first down. A flag down on the play, a loss of three as well. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the offense. Number 24, 15 yards from the end of the run. It'll be fourth down. Boy, you get brought down for a loss and the dubious distinction of the personal foul. When you get into the red zone and the field condenses, that's where speed kills. And watch your linebacker here, Christian Robinson, beat the tight end to the spot. He gets there ahead in the condensed field of the red zone. It's imperative that you get a block, and the speed just kills from Georgia. Field goal attempt from Kerry Spear coming from. 46 yards out. His career long is 44. Looks like he's got enough leg, but pushes it to the left. And a win for the Georgia defense as we go back to Wendy in the studio. All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. You know, what Chip Kelly has done offensively transcends just football. In fact, I'll tell you a little story about what effect it's had on the world champion Miami Heat. That's right. After this play. This is Gurley. Put the heat on that defense and another first down into Vanderbilt territory. Yeah, Chip Kelly has impressed the Miami Heat coaching staff so much that Eric Spolster, the head coach of the Heat, went out there last year and spent a few days with Chip Kelly and just talked about the concepts of speed, uh, positionless basketball, uh, spreading out the defense and took some of those concepts back and it, it turned into a championship year for LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. So when analysts say they play basketball on grass, <laughs> there's some credence to that. Again, coming up 10:30 over on ESPN. Pass complete at the 30-yard line to Marlon Brown, who is catching everything thrown his way tonight. That time he picks up 20. But Rich Rodriguez knows a little something about offense, too. This seems to be a little bit better fit for him in Tucson as opposed to Michigan. Why, why do you think that is? Well, that's because Mike Stoops recruited to a spread system. A lot of the receivers, Matt Scott, his redshirt senior quarterback, fits perfectly into what they want to do. So unlike in Michigan with a tight end and fullback and having to recruit out of a lot of that pro style. Gurley, touchdown. <laughs> Speaking of pro style and a fullback and a tight end, and let me just run it right down your throat. He broke two tackles or more on the way to the end zone. Point good 48 to 3, the second touchdown of the night by Todd Gurley. You know, a week ago, we had Texas that just wore down Ole Miss, and we didn't give the credit to the offensive line early enough. Watch the big boy here. Watch Chris Burnett, the redshirt junior at 322 pounds. It's been he and Dallas Lee all evening long. They get in the push on the offside, you're bringing your guard around. I'll tell you what, those, that's, a, that's a big man right those there. Those pants are full. <laughs> I'm going to say north of 322. <laughs> All right, Wendy, an exciting game going on in Tallahassee. And 48 to 3. It's 
be on it. We expected a lot more competitive game at this point. We sure did. And, and a lot of credit goes to that offensive line. I ran into a number of Georgia fans on campus today. And to me, that's the one difference between LSU and especially Alabama and Georgia. Receivers, quarterback, talent defensively. But it's up front, that's off you know, the offensive line. And can they grow and develop? And they're putting on a show tonight. Here's Kimbrough. That's returned by Kimbrough. Out to the 47 yard line. A 44 yard return. I tell you, the intensity level of the Georgia coaching staff is still alive and well. We can hear some resonant sounds coming from the booth next to us after that good kickoff return. It's almost as if Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator of Georgia, said, hey, James Franklin can do all the talking and he can create that edge. But you know what? We'll do it here at Georgia, too. Just because we're talented and we're gifted doesn't mean that we can't bring that same swagger and that same edge to the way we play as well. Lacey. Zach Stacy, pardon me, with a first down. Hey, Sunday on baseball's biggest stage, Adrian Gonzalez and the Dodgers trying to keep their wild card hopes alive as they go on the road to take on Joey Vato and the NL Central leading Reds. They actually wrapped it up tonight. They clinched it. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell. Dodgers Reds 8 on ESPN. And the Commodore Stacy in a whole lot of trouble. Jarvis Jones again. It's interesting because on film, Vanderbilt likes to do a lot of misdirection. They like to do a lot of the counters and the end arounds, but they've simply looked at the defense tonight in Georgia. With their speed and their athleticism, nothing in their playbook is working. Jones likes to listen to Tupac on his iPod. And as the late rapper once rapped and sang, all eyes on me. End of the third. <laughs> Back for the start of the final 15 minutes, the fourth quarter. It has been all red and black, Georgia. And look at the disconsolate fans that have made the trip from Nashville. And, and they haven't seen a lot of this lately. No? As, as we referenced earlier, the last five matchups within the SEC, South Carolina week one, all but been within seven points. Very different story this evening. Second and 15. Gordon Rogers at quarterback. He's gone the entire way. Got the start in place of Austin Carter Samuels. Got the start last week against Presbyterian College. Back to pass. Caught but out of bounds. Intended for Jordan Matthews. And you know who else is still playing? Jarvis Jones is still playing. Malcolm Mitchell is still playing. Georgia is not letting off the gas. Ooh, that looked awfully close there. Matthew's able to sneak that foot in. It's a well thrown ball. Ooh. Yeah, I think you got to take another look one? at that one. Yeah. I think that right foot is in while he has possession of the ball. They've already been on the wrong end of one call tonight. That that punt off in the kicker. I'm not going to get this one. Third and 15. Little screen pass incomplete. Intended for Quintero. It's fourth down in a blink. Don't forget coming up next over on ESPN, kicking off in a couple of minutes, Arizona and Oregon. Chip Kelly's team in gear, especially offensively. Was out at Oregon on a few occasions last season, and that has really become, it's not 90,000 like these SEC venues, but it's become the destination on the West Coast. It happens when you win the conference three yeah. consecutive years. Kent's punt down to the nine yard line. 38 yards on the punt, nothing on the return. We'll see if Murray comes back into the ball game when we return. Doesn't look like it now. Aaron Murray cheesing on the sidelines, all smiles and got the headset and the baseball cap on. He is 
earned a little respite right now. He has been the picture of efficiency. 18 of 24, 250 yards and a couple of touchdowns tonight, Brock. Love this last one there because that shows out the arm strength. If there's any question, it's his ability to hum it down the field. And a lot of that for me has been answered. The first time I have seen him in person, and I think his fundamental work, the attention to detail over the last three years, growing and developing and constantly pushing himself forward, well, he's, he's taking his game to a new level. Parker Welch, and their quarterback, hands it off to Malcolm. And uh, Murray, meanwhile, just passed Eric Sire, former quarterback here at Georgia on the rear touchdown list. There he is doing the radio play-by-play. -play. Had a good chance to catch up with him at halftime and just ask him that question. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? You've seen him much closer for the last three years, and he said, Aaron has made so many strides in so many ways in his decision making this year, cutting down on the interceptions on top of all those physical developments that I've referenced. On the toss, Malcolm picks up a couple. Boy, when you think about the promise that that Razorback team had at the beginning of the year, that pass complete. Brett McGowan. Making the catch on the play, a 16-yard pickup. You go back to the Bobby Petrino controversy and his subsequent firing, termination. Program yeah, never really seemed to recover no, after that. There's Bobby. a couple people happy out there, and those are agents of coaches that can point to the New Orleans situation without their head coach and Sean Payton and look at some of the dysfunction they've had. And, and in Fayetteville, just the worst nightmare for Jeff Long, the athletic director is that dysfunction of the offseason has really, really taken a toll into the regular season. On the toss, this is Malcolm. Malcolm takes it out near the 30, picks up about five on the play. We see Gurley, Marshall, Malcolm, a host of talented tailbacks. Gurley has 130 yards, Marshall at about 82, and well, Malcolm, the meter's still running for him, and it piled up over 270 rushing yards tonight. You know what you love about those freshmen? They all room together. There's no competition there. In fact, John Theus, the right tackle that we pointed out earlier, number 71, they all live together going through this. And as Coach Rick talked about, and, and you hear coaches say this all the time, but I think it's evidence on the field. They love the game, and they're in the coach's offices watching film and working out together. What a commitment from such young kids. No gain on the play by Malcolm. Yeah, when we were speaking with Tavares King during our meetings yesterday, he talked about how impressed he was by the backs, especially the two freshmen, Gurley and Marshall. And how he said that, you know, he, he wished he had that kind of poise and insight at such a young age. Third and six coming up. Of course, you know, Maria was a freshman here at that point. I'm sure she was pretty poised and on the basketball court and on the volleyball court. <laughs> Pass tipped and incomplete. Let's go down to Maria. Maria, what's up? You guys, you left out that I played basketball, too. I had, <laughs> I had poise on both courts. <laughs> no, but I was going to talk more about those freshman running backs. You know, Tavares King said he has been impressed with the maturity that they bring to the game. You know, TK has been here for five years. He's seen a lot of freshman running backs come in here, but he says they are mature. Nothing rattles them, and he's honestly been surprised every time they step out on the field. And uh, kind of scary when you think about how much better they're going to be in the coming years. Whistle and a flag on the play. Before the snap, false start, offense, number 26, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. I do think that is a position, and we've seen it in college football, that if you are talented enough and you are mature enough and you're built like that, that you can come in and find a role. Now, the pass protection and, and all the other aspects, real credit to this coaching staff to get these freshmen ready to play, but Marcus Lattimore did it a few years back. I know a different position, but Sammy Watkins up at Clemson coming on the scene. When you're a skill position guy and you're that gifted, you can find a way on the field early. Vanderbilt comes after it a little bit. Matthews hit immediately at the 35-yard line. Timeout on the field. It's been all Bulldogs tonight.
College Football Primetime is presented by Miller Lite. Because when friends come together, it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. And in part by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. Look at these sights and sounds here around Athens on Broad Street, Clayton downtown. You know, I'm going to walk, when we walk back to the hotel tonight, there, I'll just mail it in. He's, <laughs> he's done. We walk back to the hotel. I'm going to count the number of bulldog statues we see on the way. You'll, you'll be surprised how many you find around town. First and ten. Rodgers up top has a man. Boyd. And they finally hit a big one all the way down to about the three. Chris Boyd, a 60 yard catch and run. And it's first and goal for the Commodores. And that's once again picking on the very young corner and Malcolm Mitchell. You sprint away, you run a corner to the backside. Perfectly thrown ball. I'm still a little surprised, not about the number of Bulldog statues, but the number of defensive starters <laughs> still in this game, up 45 with 10 minutes to go. He made Mitchell look like a statue on that one. We got him behind him. And Georgia going to call a timeout here. What was a much closer game a year ago is a route right now, but Commodore's trying to punch one in when we come back. Georgia leading by 45. Brock Heward along with Mark Jones, Maria Taylor down the sidelines. Accountability takes on many different shapes and forms. Here's one. Our team, our time, no regrets. Hey, sophomore, get your hiney on the field. They had to burn a timeout. That's your senior. At Cornelius Washington. Exactly right. Making a statement to the young sophomore. Don't mess around and a lot of starters still in this game for Georgia defensively. On first and goal. Rodgers tries to do it himself. Did he get the pylon? Yes. Touchdown Vanderbilt. Jordan Rodgers with his first rushing touchdown of the season and the fifth of his career. And Todd Grantham the defensive coordinator not too happy about that. Great effort. Ooh, and I think that ball just barely crosses the pylon before he fumbles. It's like they're going to have another look at this. The ruling on the field was a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Now remember, he has got to possess that ball as he breaks the threshold of the goal line and that pylon. Once he does that, that's a touchdown. Ooh, it slipped. Was that ball coming out before? Yeah, that that view it sure looks like that ball was coming out. Remember, there's got to be indisputable video evidence. And that will be a touchback ball at the 20 if this call is reversed. There is a better angle. Yeah, yeah that's it, a fumble. That's going to be a touchback. To the 20 yard line. Yep. And speaking of accountability, how about the other true sophomore, Herrera, not giving up on that play, not quitting, forcing the issue, the middle linebacker 52. And I think clearly that ball out before it gets to the pylon. And those red zone woes continue for Vanderbilt. It has been that type of night for the Commodores. They finally hit a couple of big plays, get within scoring range in the red zone. And uh, I don't want to predict too much what the outcome of this is going to be, but. It appeared definitively that the ball came out before he got into the end zone or hit the pylon with it. James Franklin hoping against hope that it goes his way. After review, the ruling is that the ball carrier lost control of the ball prior to crossing the goal line. That was a fumble that went into the end zone and out of the end zone. The result of the play is a touchback. Georgia's football, first and ten from the tournament. Been that type of night for the Commodores. The Vandy's going to find a way to get back to a bowl game, which is, I think, the most realistic goal to find a way to get to six wins. They've got to score touchdowns. They lack a lot of the explosive playmakers down the field. Four of 12 in the red zone coming into tonight. 
0 for 3 as well. Been penalties, been turnovers. Been the Achilles heel. Yeah, you talk about being able to get to a bowl game. Got to get to the magical six wins. They've got Missouri and Columbia coming up next. Then Florida at home, Auburn at home. UMass, Kentucky, Ole Miss, a more favorable part of their schedule, perhaps. And finish up with Tennessee, then Wake Forest. And James Franklin has had a busy calculations. Yeah, I've been busy on that notepad tonight. A lot of corrections to be made, turnovers, penalties, just critical mistakes. Handoff is to Richard Samuel. No gain on the play. You're seeing a lot more of the young kids offensively for Georgia. Is that a reflection of some of the conversation last year with Coach Grantham and James Franklin that he wanted to keep his defensive starters in, didn't want to give up any touchdowns? Because you're seeing a lot more of the young personnel offensively for Georgia than you are defensively. This uh, Georgia team defensively has had perhaps its best night of the season. Second down and ten. They have had a great night running the ball right on this play. A yawning hole for number 22 Samuel. And what exactly is happening up on the offensive line to allow this kind of success? Well, that run was downhill, but for a lot of the evening, it's been the polling guards. Those big offensive linemen. It's Dallas Lee, 64, getting in front of Gurley, getting in front of Marshall. Just get a hat on a hat and look at the big fellas in the middle, mow them down on the goal line. There is nothing better than that. Those offensive linemen love it. Go ahead, give Murray all the praise. Talk about these freshman running backs, our explosive receivers. Those big fellas in the trenches. Remember, Will Muschamp said to us, week one, this SEC is one at the line of scrimmage. It is a line of scrimmage league. And this group tonight for the Bulldogs offensively dominant. Yeah, they've had their way with those bandy guys up front. All right, Wendy, second down and eight. It's week four, and I'll just tell you right now, I'm a little concerned for Landry Jones in Oklahoma. Why is that? They just lost a lot of firepower, and I think everybody can just assume that they're going to be the Oklahoma of the past. Last year, when they lost some key personnel, it changed. They struggled with UTEP early. Kansas State is a tough place with Bill Snyder to go in and win. And I'll just say it now, I'd be concerned this season that Oklahoma team has got to find some identity offensively. Landry Jones has got to rise to the occasion, much like Tyler Wilson at Arkansas. And you know, when you're a senior quarterback, Matt Barkley at USC, it's very easy to put it down and write it on paper. Senior quarterbacks are going to right. have success. You got to play the games. When you lack some of the offensive personnel around you, the game gets a lot harder. Third down and 10 coming up. Parker Welch in a quarterback. There's Samuel again. Down inbounds after a gain of about seven. And fourth down coming up for Georgia. They'll punt. Approaching seven and a half minutes to go. And you look at Mark Rick's schedule coming up. Talked about Vandy's a little bit. They have a favorable setup when you look at the road ahead towards a potential appearance in the SEC championship game. They don't play LSU or Alabama. At South Carolina in two weeks, Tennessee, you know, will come in here and fight and push them. And Tyler Bray will push the ball down the field. And then, oh, by the way, Will Muschamp at Florida is may, have, may be right now sitting on some of the most success of anybody early season because of what they've done against quality opponents. Seven minutes to go. 43 yard punt, nothing on the return. You surprised at his success so far? WrestleMania in Seattle <laughs> is going crazy. He is so poised, so fundamentally sound. A lot of the conversation we've had about Aaron Murray tonight. And a much stronger arm than people give him credit for. Tate with the run. And Monday Night Football at uh, 6.30. It all starts then. And, uh, and the other guy over there? Yeah, Aaron Rodgers ain't bad. By yeah. the way, Jordan Rodgers' <laughs> older brother, I don't think we mentioned that tonight. Yeah. Tate falling down after a game of about two on the play. When you look at you know quarterbacks like Russell Wilson having success at that next level, and everybody uses kind of Drew Brees as the, the template for a quote unquote shorter quarterback. Right. How do you see Murray's chances moving forward? Murray's gonna have to be more Drew Brees-esque. 
because Russell Wilson's dynamic athletic ability and how much they use him on the move. And you saw that in leading Wisconsin to a Rose Bowl. But Aaron Murray, there's a reason why that he's constantly bugging Coach Bobo for more Drew Brees film. Let me see it. Let me just take this all in because that's the guy he models his game after. Third and four. Rodgers tried to switch hands, maybe thought about throwing a pass left-handed. Ball knocked out of bounds, and Rodgers brought down to the turf hard. Out of Chico, California, he's the first junior college quarterback that they've ever had. And boy, he took a lick at the end of that play. Brown, then. Offense, number 11. Loss of down at the spot of the foul. It'll be fourth down. Isn't he outside the tackle box? I thought that was the rule. Huh. Yeah, I guess it didn't didn't get back to the line of scrimmage, but boy, what a bunch of punishment he's taken. Look at that. Grass stained jerseys. That's what he's asking. <laughs> I took a beating and I got penalized. And Jordan Jenkins, just another freshman at 6'3, 260, chasing him down. Hey, what one of the MVPs for Vanderbilt tonight has been Richard Kent, the punter. McGowan on the return. And a nice dash down to the 43 yard line as we go back to Wendy in the studio. How right about Wendy. Notre Dame 4 0? Are they back? Got Michigan and Michigan State picked off this year. Now a different quarterback in, Christian LeMay for the Bulldogs. Seahawks built much the same vein as those 49ers with incredible size and strength in their secondary. That's going to be a terrific matchup. And flags down on the field. That's kind of the way this night started. Star. Offense, number 64, five yards, still second down. Under five minutes to go. And a lot of the young kids at Georgia getting their opportunity to play in a game that has been very, very different. And I'll remind you once again, this Vanderbilt team took South Carolina late to the fourth quarter and lost 17 to 13 week one. Keep that in context as Georgia has just blown them away this evening. Georgia right at their average of about 47 points a game. Five previous losses in SEC play by the Commodores have been close contests. So this one tonight, an aberration for head coach James Franklin and his gang. And a real challenge for Coach Franklin because it's easy to coach your kids up to get over the hump. You're right there. He's talked a lot about finish and having that mentality to finish drives and finish fourth quarters where they've also struggled this season and finish games. But tonight, that's not going to be the, the mantra or the message. Tonight, you've got to physically regroup and say, that's where we've got to get to. We, in our program, we've got to get to a point where physically we're a whole lot closer to Georgia because we're going to go on the road in the SEC and compete and contend. But you saw athletically the difference tonight. Boy, LeMay got drilled on that play. Vanderbilt will have a week off next week and then travel up to Columbia, Missouri to take on the Tigers. And meanwhile, Georgia will stay home next week and take on the Tennessee Volunteers resurgent a little bit this year under head coach Derek Dooley after a disappointing season last year will go to South Carolina to take on the Gamecocks Colin Barber to punt approaching three minutes to go Take that delay a game. Delay a game on the offense, number 32. Five yards, still fourth down. Now, there was a lot of talk from both sides this week leading up to the game about what went on at the end of last year's game. Coach Franklin and Coach Grantham getting into each other's face. And they kind of downplayed it. Coach Franklin was humorous at one point, saying, Yeah, our families vacation together at Disney, and we we're. You know, sipping my ties together, that obviously not the case. But Georgia comes out tonight, Brock, and really 
made a statement about who they are. They really planted their feet and said, this is who we are. I'm not sure that Coach Franklin got the response he wanted. It's going to be a very difficult bus ride home. As I just reiterated, it's one thing when you're close. And, and you know this from all the basketball you've covered and anybody out there from a competitive standpoint, you know when you're close and there's right. a play you can point to or two or three. That's a different story tonight. This has just been a Georgia dominance at the point of attack, right. offensively, defensively. Other than a drive before halftime, there's very little positive to point to. And I know James Franklin will attempt to do that, but a very, very difficult message to sell to his team that you're close, you're getting there with the schedule that I said over the next few weeks is just relentless. Austin Carter Samuels, the backup quarterback who started last week against Presbyterian College, <laughs> runs it. Carter Samuels put up some pretty good weeks, uh, some pretty good stats and numbers last week against PC. Completed 13 and 20 passes, 195 yards for a touchdown. You're also going to be searching for some of your leadership. And I think that comes to light just a little bit last year, how important Chris Marv was to that Vanderbilt defense. And, and, and who is and who are your leaders and who can emerge and say, no, we got to stick to the plan, keep working, and dig ourselves out of this. Carter Samuels completes his first pass to Jordan Matthews. And how much of a distraction, if at all, is it that Within the team, you're not sure who the quarterback's going to be from week to week. Yeah, when, when the story unfolds as it did tonight, I, I think that is a very, very small subtext right. somewhere. I don't, I don't even think that enters the conversation. In their next game, though, when they play Missouri, now you've got an extra week to speculate about it. Yeah, right? that's exactly right. That's, that is completely fair. But if the message behind closed doors is everybody's going to compete for their spot, it reminds me of, of that Monday night promo in, in Russell Wilson. And Pete Carroll has said, I'm going to treat the quarterback position like any other position. And Russell Wilson, if you can come in and beat Matt Flynn, the former Green Bay Packer, is a third-round rookie. And well, you spent a lot of money on it. And right? you earn it, exactly. Yeah. Giving Matt Flynn $10 million, and you've earned it, you're going to play. And James Franklin's trying to establish that same competitive edge of Vanderbilt, that everybody's going to compete week in and week out. And it's well beyond the quarterback story tonight, because I thought Jordan fought and was tough and I'm sure coach Franklin will say and reiterate the same things in his post game message. Carter Samuels on the move. Close it incomplete. Carter Samuels the former Mountain West Conference freshman of the year led the Wyoming Cowboys to a bowl game their first one in a long time and then on the heels of that they had a three and nine season. There was a little disconnect there and he decided to transfer. At one point thought about going to Arizona for enrolling at Vanderbilt and uh, the good news for the Commodores is that uh, his brother I'm told has made a verbal commitment to play at Vanderbilt. Grandfather, his grandfather actually played uh, basketball uh, baseball at Vanderbilt uh, back in the day. And we all know what the lifeblood is and of, of these college football programs and that is recruiting and that is where Coach Franklin did such a nice job this last offseason putting together arguably the best class in the history of Vanderbilt four four star players every one of the recruits three star or above at what point do you start seeing the fruits of that though how many years does it take in this conference <laughs> a whole lot more because everyone else has them too right? that's exactly right 40 seconds to go fourth and three <laughs> But you put together those classes when you go to a bowl game and you go six and six and you're starting to change some of that culture. That's why it's important for them to get this thing back on track and not have too many 48 to three competitions here the rest of the season. One comes down at the 24 yard line. Uh, Rhett McGowan calls for the fair catch. Hey, folks, don't forget, coming up next, Sports Center with a huge wrap up of a big day once again in college football. The top five teams in trouble. AL East extra innings madness going on, and Miguel Cabrera closing in on the triple crown in baseball. And Mark Ricks, and Bakari Rambo, who didn't play tonight, will be eligible. He should be back. That next is the week. speculation next week. Nothing better as a team than living up to expectations. The crowd came in here expecting to see a top five team in America, and they delivered. 
The quarterback was a stud, and you physically imposed your will and dominated an opponent that was awfully scrappy a year ago, but not close tonight. Last year, there was a confrontation at the end of the game. This year, no such extracurricular activities. The final score, 48-3. to Georgia convincingly improving to 4-0 on the season. Folks, coming up next, SportsCenter. Check in on a wild college football Saturday. Lots of great stories. Good night, everybody, from Athens.